WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. And a policy that only impacts Mississippi, the NCAA will prohibit the state sports teams from hosting regional and regional games and championships or host sites for women's basketball. The collegiate sports governing body announced the decision this morning. It says the state flag is the reason behind the decision. NCAA says it expanded its Confederate flag policy from championship events from where being played is uh, the symbol is a has a prominent presence. This will impact baseball, softball, lacrosse, and women's basketball. In a statement, NCAA leaders wrote, "There's no place in collegiate athletics or the world for symbols or acts of discrimination and oppression." The NCAA hosts 90 championships and 24 sports every year. Mississippi State Athletics Director John Cohen responding to the news today with a statement saying, again, it is unfortunate that our hardworking student athletes, staff, and coaches could potentially be affected by something beyond their control, but we understand this is bigger than athletics, unquote. Cohen also doubling down on a statement from Thursday saying they support a change to the state flag. Ole Miss Athletic Director Keith Carter voicing his support to change the state flag, agreeing with this statement from Mississippi's public universities. Quote, today we are committed to continuing to do our part to ensure Mississippi is united in its pursuit of a future that is free of racism and discrimination. Such a future must include a new state flag, end quote. Many businesses in Starkville say the NCAA's decision could be devastating. Tournaments mean big money for stores, hotels, and restaurants. Our Quentin Smith speaks with a business owner today about the impact this could have, and he joins us live in the studio with more. Quentin? Yeah, Joey, John Hendricks owns the lodge and says whenever postseason athletics comes to MSU, hundreds of people pour into his store trying to get their hands on MSU merchandise. But with this new ruling, he knows his store, along with many others in Starkville, could be losing out on some big sales they're accustomed to getting this time of year. Whether it's cheering on the Diamond Dogs or rooting for the women's basketball team. When Mississippi State is in the postseason, the Lodge is always on the winning side of things. Business is wonderful. Anything that brings a lot of people to town, especially as exciting as baseball has been, helps the entire town. And we're part of the town, so it helps us as well. From t-shirts to popular MSU paraphernalia, hundreds of people flood the store cashing in on MSU gear for the big games. But with the new NCAA ruling prohibiting championship games and events, owner John Hendricks says it's going to be a big blow to his business. It would hurt us. I think it would hurt the entire community, uh, hotels, restaurants, you name it. I am very hopeful that the legislature will take some action and make this something we don't have to worry about any longer. In May of 2019, Mississippi State's women's basketball team hosted the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament, and the men's baseball team hosted the NCAA regionals. That month alone, sales tax revenue for the city of Starkville was roughly $604,000. Mayor Lynn Spruill expects that number to take a big dip if MSU isn't able to host these events in the future. That's just unacceptable for us to be put in that position over something that should have been changed decades ago. Spruill says she hopes this latest decision will now prompt state lawmakers to change the state flag. We're at a point now where we are looking at a loss of revenue, a loss of prestige, a potential loss of uh, students who may feel as though this is not the place they want to be. We also, as citizens and, and as local leaders, have the opportunity to say to our legislators in their representation of us that these things matter and it is time for us to step up and do something different. And the money doesn't just stop at the Starkville city limits. Many of those visitors stay, shop and eat in West Point and Columbus as well. It's been a warm Friday around here. We've had a few isolated showers on radar over the last hour. Still a little bit of a sprinkle action perhaps around Aberdeen, but that's really about it. That's our cloud and radar perspective here. 
mostly sunny in just about all locales at this point. Our Tom Laps from downtown Columbus Day. Look at that, a summer like sky today. The last day of spring. Summer officially begins tomorrow. If you're heading out this evening or just staying home, it's going to be a warm night. 85 at 7 o'clock, low 70s by 11, mid to upper 60s for lows tonight, but we start out sunny and 70 at 7 a.m. Saturday. Your full weekend forecast coming up. A Starkville man is arrested in Kemper County on a child sex crime. Simeon Weatherby is charged with sexual battery. Kemper County deputies say Weatherby was employed by the Kemper County School District when the investigation started last October. Investigators were informed Weatherby was allegedly having an inappropriate relationship with a student at Kemper County High School. A probable cause hearing was held last week. Weatherby was arrested this morning. His bond was set at $20,000. Weatherby previously worked as an educator in Octibaha and Lowndes counties. A fugitive is in custody after a standoff in Winona this morning. 47 year old William Lee Berry has been on the run for about four months after not appearing at a trial date in Grenada County. Investigators found out he was going to a home on Sterling Avenue in Winona. Winona Police, Montgomery County deputies, and U.S. Marshals went to arrest Barry this morning at that home. Chief Investigator Dan Harrod says Barry barricaded himself in the attic. Later, Starkville Police uh, SWAT team members arrived and Barry surrendered and was taken to the Grenada County Jail. Barry was indicted in Grenada County for burglary of a dwelling, attempted rape, and aggravated assault. Octibaha County deputies are investigating an early morning shooting. The gunfire happened on Octok Road about 2.30 a.m. Investigators say people inside two vehicles were shooting at each other. A juvenile victim was hit by a bullet and later released from a Macon hospital. There were multiple people inside the vehicle with the juvenile. No arrests have been made in the case, which remains under investigation. Lowndes County deputies make arrests in two separate kidnapping investigations. Dakar Fleming is charged with kidnapping and possession of a stolen vehicle. Investigators say a person called deputies to report being held against their will by Fleming back on June 5th and 6th. Yesterday, deputies responded to a suspicious person call on Jack Wiggins Road and found Fleming walking in the area. Law enforcement also found him with a vehicle that was reported stolen from Lamar County, Alabama, where he could face charges. In an unrelated case, Kevin Parker is charged with kidnapping, aggravated ass domestic assault, possession of a weapon by a convicted felon, and possession of meth precursors. Deputies were called to Old Yorkville Road on June 14th about a person claiming Parker held them against their will. Parker was arrested two days later after deputies responded to another incident and found him. Meanwhile, deputies continue to search for Corey Mixon. He's wanted for aggravated assault and kidnapping. Parker is out of jail on a $42,000 bond. If you know where Mixon is, call Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers. The search will soon be on for a new director for the band Corp South Arena. Longtime Arena director Todd Hunt is retiring at the end of June to take a job as a consultant for a Nashville based company. The band Corp South Arena has experienced record setting growth under Hunt's leadership. The former chairman of the Coliseum Commission says Hunt will be tough to replace. We are the only 10,000 seat arena in a town our size in the country. We don't have a beach, we don't have a mountain, we don't have a river for people to come to. We have a town and a building, and so his ability to attract the kind of acts that he has attracted to people has been extraordinary. And then you think about the, the fact that we have, uh, we have conferences here constantly. Reed said Hunt was instrumental in planning the current $15 million expansion that will enlarge Hello. the conference center, add a VIP area, and other amenities for the arena. Lowndes County residents are joining in a celebration of freedom. We check in on today's event and the history behind it when we come back. You're watching WCBI's News at 6 with Joey Barnes. Welcome back, everyone. Communities across the country are celebrating Juneteenth today. It's a holiday that recognizes the end of slavery in the U.S. Our Stephanie Poole joins us live from the celebration. That's 
That's right, Joey. Community members are here out Southside Park in Columbus. Now, there are jumpers, music, food. There are a couple tents set up, as you can see. And people are just coming out having a time. And there are still cars lining up, finding us parking spots to join in on the festivities. I spoke with a few community members earlier today who hosted the first event 24 years ago. It's a time to remember, reflect, and rejoice. The Juneteenth holiday ties family, friends, and history together. Leroy Brooks and a small committee of volunteers organized the very first Juneteenth celebration in Columbus. That was in 1996. It was a small affair. We, we had a flatbed truck that the entertainers performed on, and, and you had a few vendors. You know, it was kind of new to us. After years of music, food, and commemorating the past, Brooks says this has been a stepping stone to further connect the African American community. It's grown tremendously since then in terms of participation, and the things we like to pride ourselves in is the fact that we get huge crowds, people from uh, all over the southeast, Atlanta, Tennessee, Alabama. So it was exciting, and it's like, let's try it. And we did that first year, and it just took off, and, it, and everybody loves Juneteenth. It's really a time of um, family and friends, and you get to see so many people coming home strictly for the Juneteenth um, celebration. Committee member Cindy Lawrence says with multiple headlines in the media during this time, she's hopeful more people will educate themselves on the holiday and choose to participate. You're seeing and hearing about it a lot right now, especially with the president making mention of Juneteenth. Everybody is trying to understand what Juneteenth is about. Love to see where different races, different cultures all come in. You know, we all have different booths and we talk about our culture and what we do. And I think it'll be really exciting for people to learn each other. And next year, they can all reflect together. We always have to encourage other ethnic groups to try to understand the dynamics of the African American experience. I think if they understand the dynamics of what black people have gone through, some of them will be a lot more sensitive. You know? Brooke says there will be a Juneteenth parade tomorrow. Lineup will start at 1230 and the parade will kick off at 1 p.m. The parade will start on Main Street and end on 20th Street. For now, reporting live in Columbus, Stephanie Poole, WCBI News. Keith, you and I were just talking about the weather cooperating this evening. Sure did. Uh, a little warm out there this yeah. evening. A little, <laughs> no little warm, but rain chances holding off here a little bit, uh, much like today for your Saturday. Can't rely on the straight shower here, but the odds of rain going up, especially as we get into next week. Look at that. We'll have the details next. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Do you like these long days we have right now? The longest days of the year happening right now. Technically tomorrow, June 20th, the summer solstice, 14 hours, 22 minutes and 36 seconds. We start to lose a little bit of daylight starting Sunday and we keep losing it all the way until December 21st when we only have nine hours, 55 minutes and 51 seconds. But those cold days will take a long time to get here. So summer begins tomorrow. Don't forget Father's Day is Sunday. Highs this weekend, low to mid 90s. Limited opportunities for rain, as we mentioned. Better odds going into next week. This is our Alpha Insurance Camera Network in Vernon, Durham's Pharmacy, Louisville, Mississippi, Columbus, and Tupelo, upper 80s to around 90 right now. Very summer-like across our region as we fly on down to Monroe County. There are a few isolated showers, one just to the southeast of Aberdeen, another one right there along 45 just to the northwest of Aberdeen. That's really about it for our day today right now. Most of the action is out here in Oklahoma and Texas, right along this frontal boundary. That front's going to fall apart before it gets here. But that front and a front behind it will at least give us a better opportunity for some more scattered showers and storms as we get into next week. Tomorrow, your Saturday, we start out in the upper 60s if you are up early. By the afternoon, low to mid 90s around here, so it is going to be warm. We're going to call it partly cloudy, but much like today in the last couple of days, can't rule out a stray shower. But most spots, if not all spots, will stay dry. Winds from the southwest at about 3 to 7. So really not a lot of air movement out there. Just find a cool place to be on our Saturday afternoon. Notice how the clouds will form and likely go away. This version of Futurecast suggests a little bit more thunderstorm activity on Sunday. We're not going with that just yet. We think there is going to be a better opportunity for a few scattered storms and showers here Sunday. 
Hence the 20% chance on Sunday, but at this point it doesn't look like a washout. As we mentioned, as we get into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, probably Tuesday and the Wednesday, the better opportunity for some rain as that weak front tries to come on into the deep south. So here's your weekend, low to mid-90s for highs, lows getting back into the lower 70s going into next week. Higher odds of rain by Tuesday and Wednesday, not as warm by the middle of next week because of the rain opportunities. Joey? All right, thanks, Keith. Local coaches hope sports can be the bridge that brings people together. Some lessons from the locker room next in sports. WCDI Sports with Tom Ebel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Chris, the beauty of sports is that they bring all of us together, no matter what walk of life we come from. That's true, Tom. Hall of Fame football coach Tom Landry once said, football is an incredible game. Sometimes it's so incredible, it's unbelievable. And with that, as calls for change come from every corner of the country, I talk with area coaches to see how this incredible game works to bring everyone together. Football is a sport that's all about teamwork, love, and camaraderie, an atmosphere that many coaches think our everyday world could learn from. Some of the top high school coaches in the state set out to create an environment that reflects those beliefs. We got a great locker room. We don't just have black kids, we got white kids. But we don't hear, you know, friction and all that stuff because we treat, it, treat everybody like, you know, that's my brother. We don't treat them like that's my black brother, that's my white brother, like that's my brother. Starkville head coach Chris Jones and Tupelo head coach Ty Harden are both leaders of some of the biggest locker rooms in the state. Both believe it's important to practice what you preach. The whole saying actions speak louder than words and I think that's what that's what culture is it's just what you do every day and uh, what people see and and that's one thing about 13 to 18 year old young men they can see through anything they're some of the sm they're smartest people on earth they can see if somebody's real and somebody's fake and their words or however y'all say it man uh, they're gonna let you know and, and to me you always want to just try to come correct with kids but because if you don't become correct with kids they correct you. Athletes across the country are using their voice when it comes to societal issues, including high school athletes. Coaches know that and are taking out the time to listen and have conversations to better understand their athletes' thoughts and feelings. The first day we were together as a team, that uh, June 1st date, um, that was the first thing I wanted to address because uh, it's something that you need to and have to. Most of it is just listening, to be honest with you, just kind of get their opinion on it because I don't want to jump to conclusion and tell them this is how you should feel. I can't tell you how you should feel. I want to know how you're feeling first. And maybe let me think about it and let me kind of figure out how I can reach you and help you understand what's going on and help feel and understand your pain. Wins and championships are always the goal when a team steps foot on the gridiron, but that's not the end all be all. The same messages coaches are telling their players to get the win on Friday night are the same messages they believe the young men they're molding will carry with them the rest of their lives. We can't deny that you're black, you're white, but what you also can't deny is a person's heart. It's bigger than just like your world, your culture. See, to that, to me, that helps you understand, like, you know, this kid who didn't grow up the way you grew up, who didn't, who might not have a meal tomorrow, but you sympathize for that kid because I'm in the locker room. That kid, I know kids go hungry, you know, because my my best friend used to be that way or whatever the case may be because I played ball with him versus. Your circle, all y'all rich, all y'all got money, y'all don't understand what it feels like to, to not have. Mm -hmm. like versus, yeah, I'm rich or whatever the case may be, but I play with some guys who don't have. You know, and it hurts me to see that they don't have. Hopefully, you know, when the guys leave me, you know, when you're 19, 20, you're 30 years old, you know, you can have that same effect on your wife, your kids, and guess what they're going to do? They're going to have that effect on another family and another family and another family. In order to reach the athletes they see every day, both coaches know there's one important key to send their message. We have to adapt because y'all are the future and y'all got some bright ideas and sometimes we're so set in our old ways and we don't get a chance to like truly open up and see like, okay, you might have a point. If you're not able to adapt and get what the times are going on, you'll get left or you're not going to reach these people that are out here. You're not going to be able to connect with them because you've got to adapt to them and you've got to do what's right by them. Once the stadium lights turn off, the bleachers are empty and the game is over. Harden holds firm to this belief about the world. And this generation of young, uh, young, young adults are going to be the people to change it. In Columbus, Chris Bolton, WCBI Sports. 
Tune in Sunday as we continue our conversation with coaches about representation of minority coaches in Mississippi high school sports. Thanks, Chris. We'll be back right after the break. Uh, the weekend, it is finally here. It's looking pretty good overall. Can't roll out a stray shower tomorrow. Maybe a better chance for a spotty storm or shower on Sunday. Joy next week, we have better opportunities for rain. So get ready for it. Have the heat and then the rain, mm -hmm. the sauna. And our plants can use some of that rain. Yes, no doubt. Garden's kind of drying mm -hmm. up. All right. Thanks, Keith. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Have a good night.